Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Amano Itoje and thank you for watching this video. Uh, before we jump into our discussion today, please kindly support this channel by subscribing to the channel, liking the video and as well as um, giving your comments. It's going to be helpful for us in this channel. So thank you so much. So in today's video, we'll be looking at, we're looking at how to host a WordPress site in Azure, how to host a WordPress site in Azure. So the reason why I, I thought of doing this video was because I, I've been thinking of how to, I wanted to actually create a blog site where I'll be dropping content, writing articles, but I wanted it to be, I don't want it to be a, a, a blog site that will basically be on the, on the public domain. I wanted it to be something that I'm hosting on my own. So I did some research from my research. I'm, I was able to, to come up with what I'm going to share with us in this video, basically. So what is the lesson outline today? So in today we're going to be looking at um, what is WordPress? So we want to understand what WordPress is, we'll be looking at the why use um, Microsoft Azure to actually host the WordPress site. Then I will be jumping into a live demo. So what is WordPress? So WordPress um, is one of the most powerful tools and is widely used by over 40% of the web to create websites, blog, and other application. So basically WordPress is one of the, is a, is a, is a content management system, a CMS that you can use to create a website. So instead of coding from the scratch, the, 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 the whole coding has been done for you. All you be, all you be doing is to do editing, doing drag and drop, and uh, putting where you want your stuff to be basically so the same wordpress you can also use it to create a blog so if you have articles if you're a technical writer you love to write articles technical information so you can actually use a wordpress to write your blog and it's be available for everybody and you can also use it to host um lots of other applications as well so wordpress can be run on a few Azure services. So in terms of the cloud infrastructure, services such as um, Azure Kubernetes Service, um, virtual machines and app service, you can actually run your WordPress on each of those um, Azure services, basically. And um, the easiest and straightforward um, deployment option to use um, is to actually use a WordPress template from the web app gallery. So we're going to see the web applications gallery where we'll be doing during our live demo. Then with, um, with Azure App Service, you can deploy and configure your own WordPress site in minutes. So that's one of the advantage why we need to, use, why we are actually using the Azure because the next question is why use Azure itself? So why are we using Azure to, to deploy? To, to actually host our WordPress. What is, why can't we use Because I remember in traditionally when, when I was hosting my applications locally for WordPress, I needed to actually install the XAM server or the, the WAMP or depending on the platform I have, then configure my PHP at my admin to do the administrative part and all that before installing the WordPress and doing a lot of configuration. But I don't need to do all those because the infrastructure is already available to me on Azure because one of the reasons why I'm using Azure is, is for easy deployment. So you can deploy your website on Azure by basically searching for WordPress in the market list. So this method enables you to install WordPress in about five to 10 minutes. You, you already have your site up and running. We're going to see it um, in the demo. Another reason why we need to use, um, why we're using Azure is to, is to actually leverage on what we call automated backups. So with automated backup, one of the main advantage of Azure are actually automated backups because you can use it to control the backups scheduling. I can also plan the backup life cycle itself. And um, another reason why we using um why use um Microsoft Azure is all known as um, available metrics. So you can install from you can install different metrics from Azure services. For example, if you want to get the number of visitors by region or time of the day. You can set up alerts regarding the performance of your website. So you can do a lot of um, metric settings. Let's say for example, now you have an e-commerce site on your west on, on your that is hosted on Azure. You can and during maybe and Black Friday or you're running a promo where you're gonna have a lot of people visiting the site with the help of Azure 
for scalability, elasticity, those property of the cloud is available for you. All right, so let's jump into a live demo. All right, so the first thing we need to do for us is to actually sign into portal.hazure.com. Once you sign into the portal.hazure.com, you're signing into your account that has um, the required subscriptions. So the first thing in the search bar here, we need to search for marketplace. So on the services, we're going to see marketplace here. You click on marketplace because you actually it's, it's kind of a marketplace is actually a place where you actually you can buy different um different stores basically so in the marketplace we're going to search for using the search bar we're going to search for wordpress wordpress the search so I actually have the option to filter by all by operating system and all that if you want to filter by your services as well you can click on this but we're not going to use that so what we are looking for is on owners wordpress on app services here so we can see that we have different wordpress you have the wordpress itself the open light speed wordpress wordpress on azure wordpress web server wordpress server plus mysql and php admin so what we need is this wordpress on app service so we're going to click on that so after clicking on we click on the check box you discover that it's only the web wordpress on app service you're going to see here so the next thing you need to do you can just read through this to get an overview to get and the plans that are available using information and support, ratings and review, you can just read about it. But what we need to do here is how we're creating. So you click on create. So at the point of creation, it's going to take us to a page where we'll be able to actually, you know, create the WordPress on the hub service. So if you can see, I actually, if I go back, I have two subscriptions, the same name, they're both called Virtual Studio Enterprise subscription. One of them is disabled why the other one is active. But by default, because this disabled subscription has been the only subscription I had before, before it was disabled. So it's selected that by default. So I need to click on the drop down here and select the subscription that is active, which is the second one here. So that subscription is active. The subscription I got from Microsoft Certified um, as a Microsoft Certified Trainer, anyway. So for resource group, you can check. I only have new domain resource. So I want to create a resource group. Okay, let me create a resource group called website website rg as a resource ground to create click on okay so i want everything about the websites to be actually all the resources for the websites to be in that particular resource group so the region here is by default is giving me net, not central us i'm going to change it to east us just for the sake of the demo then the name so the name whichever name i'm putting here with azurewebsite.net will be the default name that will be given to me. Just like in Microsoft 365, whenever you're creating a tenant, it gives you the dot on Microsoft.com. In the case of the um, app service, it's going to give you dot azurewebsite.net. So let's say the site I want to create is, I call it invarious dot azurewebsite.com. So it's telling me that the app service name is not available. So I'm going to put invarious tech dot azure website of so it gives me that, that that is available for me so the next thing is um that is the host the hosting details the region and the name of the hubs then the hosting plan for the hosting plan it's giving me standard by default so i'm not going to change that i'm going to leave that by default because the standard will actually give me access to do every other thing i want to do then the site language so i want the, the site to be in english united states then the name of the admin um the admin email so basically if i want to sign into the admin panel of the wordpress site so either the admin email or the admin username so i'm going to leave that as the admin email because i always remember that name down the username then i'm going to create a password so a password that i will always remember because these are the information i will need to sign into the admin panel of the site you're going to get there so you have to remember all the details here admin email admin username admin password and confirm password so i'll click on next advance so on the advanced tab so it's showing me that the azure email service is enabled for me because it's part of the plan that i actually selected then United States 
is the is if I want my data to be resided in the United States, I can leave that at default. But if I want to change it to Africa, I can also do that as well. So the next one is talking about um Azure CDN. So it's recommended that for me. So I'm going to leave it at default. So um uh, Azure CDN basically a content delivery network is like a distributed uh, network of servers that can efficiently deliver web content to users. So a CDN stores um cached content on hedge servers in a point of present location that are close to the end users to actually minimize um latency. Then Azure front front door here. I'm going to leave that is even grayed out for me. Then for my Azure um, blob storage, so it's recommended that for me to store, allows you to store and access images, videos, and other files. So if I have videos, so the blob storage is what I'm going to use. So the storage account, it's um, creating that for me by default. I'm going to leave it. Then also the uh, virtual networks. So it's creating that for me by default. So I'm going to leave that also by default and click on tags. So the tag is basically okay. I can see this is created by created by I'm just gonna tell you that it is created by me. So I'm gonna put my name there. It's not compulsory, you can actually leave it. And I'll click on review and create. So this is basically going to review everything I've configured. If there's something that needs editing and all that. The system um, is going to check for me it's going to validate it so if um, if everything is good it's going to um, allow me to proceed but if something is wrong it's going to actually point into a place where something is wrong so it's still revealing for me so let's see maybe it's going to validate all the information now it's everything is good so it tells it tells me that the subscription i'm using the name of the resource crew the name of the site then um the name the operating system is hosted on the Linux, then the region is about the app service plan, then uh, the memory, the tags, then the, the WordPress settings. So these are the admin in email and the admin username. So all the details are there. Then the database are also things that will be configured as well for me. By the time I click on create network as well, it's also be created for me. So it's telling me that all this based on the app service plan. MySQL flex server, so it tells me that this is a RAM, the storage, and all that. So I'm going to click on create. So it told me initializing deployment. So once deployment starts, I'm, I'm basically going to pause the video because it's going to take about five to ten minutes before um, this is actually deployed for me. For now, I don't need to do anything. Azure is going to take care of itself, so it's submitting the deployment right now. So it's submitting all this information, so it's going to start creating everything. So it tell, it tell, it's telling me that deployment is in progress. So I'm going to see that um, deployment has started. So it's loading, so it's saying deployment is in progress. You're going to see everything. So I'm going to pause this video and allow um, most of the things to be deployed before the deployment is complete. And I'll come back and show us so that we can see the things they will deploy. So the things of the deploy are basically those things that are actually listed here. So so far you can see that the subnet has been created and email communication has been created. So I'm going to pause the video now. Then I will come back. So we can see that so far it has deployed communication service on Microsoft.com communication email. Our Azure database for MySquare has been deployed. Um, our Microsoft network for our private DNA zone. So we have that here. Our uh, deployment for subnets is here as well. Um, our virtual machines also has been deployed so far. So we have uh, more communication uh, services that are also being deployed so far. So you can see the storage accounts has been deployed here. The app service plan has been deployed. Uh, the the front door and the CDN profile they've been deployed as well. Our uh, database has been deployed as well. Yeah. So so far, these are the things that have been deployed so far. Our storage resources has also been deployed as well. So also we have an our endpoints also has been deployed. So once that is done, so you're going to see that the deployment succeeded. So it's, it's going to, it's, it's, if there is an issue with the deployment, so basically it's going to trigger an error. But our deployment is completed, 
So the next thing we need to do is to just click on go to resources here. Yeah? Go to resource. So we're going to see our our resource in various stake web app. So this is our resource. So if you can see currently it's currently um, running. The status is saying that it's running at the moment. So we can we have different options. You want to browse through it. You can browse through it. It's going to give us the URL. If you click on this browse, it's going to take us to the site. And um, the diff this is a default domain. So the same thing, if you click on this browse here, and you click on this default domain, it's going to take you to the same place as well. So what you need to do, you can just copy this domain and open in a new tab and paste it there once you launch it it's going to open our azure wordpress site so the wordpress on azure so you're going to see wordpress on azure welcome so is wordpress is actually installing this also takes some time to install as well so the same thing as well if you click on browse also it's going to open it's going to do the same thing basically so that's actually how to navigate into our WordPress site. So you can see all the things about the site. So if you want to check your configuration, if you want to configure your alt check, you can configure that here. We're not going to do that in this video. So your application insights, you can enable it there. Then your deployment center, you can view your logs here. If you want to view the logs of the deployment. So this tells you more details. These are actually properties of, of the, the web application itself. It is the publishing model is a container, right? It's published with then the container image that was deployed. This is the container image. So there's a default domain here. I will have the option to also have a custom domain. This is something we're going to do in our next video, not in this current video because of time. Here is just for us to see how it's done. So you can see the operating system, the number of instances, it's one. In the SKU and the and the size you see it there. So if you want to scale up also, you can scale up here as well. The other things like you can restart the site. If the site is having issues, maybe performance issue also, you can recite you can restart the site here. If you if you don't we are done with the site, you don't need the site again. You can delete, you can refresh, you can download the public um the, you can download publish profile, you can reset the publish profile. So these are the things you need to do in the next video. I want to see if this is done already. So we are still installing the WordPress. So let's still give it some time for it to install. Let's give it some time for it to install. So while we're waiting for it to install, it's still going to take up to five minutes. So if you click on this documentation, so for someone that is new to WordPress on Azure, if you click on this documentation, it's going to actually open the documentation for you. So this actually takes you to a GitHub where you can actually see the documentations. So other things you want to learn about configuration and all things. So this is actually a very useful resource. Let me go back to the WordPress. Let's see if it does install. All right, so our site is ready. So this is our, our site, mind blown, a blog about philosophy. So hello world, welcome to WordPress. This is your first post, the DT to create or start writing. So like I said, you can use the WordPress to actually host the website. You can also use it to write blog. You can also use it for applications. So how do we navigate to the admin part of this our site? How do we navigate to the admin part of the WordPress where we can do our customization? That's the next thing we want to do now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this same URL here. I'm going to copy and I'll open a new tab here. From the new tab, I'm going to paste it. Once I paste it, I will launch. Then I'll have WP hyphen admin. So WP means WordPress hyphen then admin. So this is going to take us to the admin center for the WordPress. So if you remember the username or the email address and the password that we created when we we're creating the site from the Azure portal, we need to put it there. So I'm going to put the email address. You can use the username or the email address, anyone. Then the password that we created, I'm going to type in the password. Then click on login. 
So this will log me into the dashboard for the WordPress. So any editing that I want to do to the site, I can easily come here to do it. Let's say for example now, I, I don't want to, I want to actually um, add a teams, a, a teams or like, or like a template for this site to look like a website. So from the dashboard, all I need to do is to go to the appearance and click on teams. So from the teams, I can see a lot of, so this is the, the current team that is showing here. This is the current team that is showing, that's what I said. So I can actually choose to customize it or if I feel like I don't want this team, this team, I don't like any of this team, I can click on add new team. So let me go hard anything that is that is looking good so so far we'll see the, the teams that are that actually that have been installed so far so i can just go browse through category of teams i can use create my customs i can add my customs if i want to add it so i'm just going to browse through these teams so let's say the team that i like that i would like to use is this for example so i can click on the team and click on install to so install let me go back Close this for now. So he's installing the teams. Why that is installing? I can look for another one. Let me flex it first. Let me install this. Then let me look for another one. And we'll, let me install this as well. So let's see this Flexiverse has been installed. I want to use this Flexiverse. So I'll just click on activate here. So it has been activated. So if I want to customize it, I can click on customize. Well, let me see how, so let me go back to the front end of the site and refresh. You will see that it has changed because I've created a new thing. So I just refresh. So this has changed. So I can decide to customize these things based on my organization by changing the logo. So it's very easy. Just come here to the teams and click on customize here. Once you click on customize to open an editor for you so based on your skills around wordpress you can begin to start editing it let's say for example i don't like how what is showing here for me i can click here the header for example let me change it to something else and edit so let's click on edit first actually then once you click on edit you can then edit it click this i'm putting maybe my organization name okay, what is under here as well so i'm put something um, Needs deliver. So as I'm editing, once remember to save, save. Once you save it, okay. Let me edit the phone number here as well. Let me put another number there. Okay. Put it under number here. I can edit this as well. Let me change it to support at um, hard. So anything you're doing here, you have to remember to save it. So let me edit the logo here. So I can upload logo basically. So I don't have any logo here. So I can upload file, then select file. So I can go into Let me go into my branding I just put that there so it's going to basically upload this for me here then I will click on select down here so it's there for me but because something is lazy over there so I can click on this to change that right then remember to save so that's how we can see sites uploaded. So let me go back to the admin part and refresh this.
so that's what we have there so you can do a lot of changes the number that i change has changed here to support email so i can change this location here as well i've changed the name change the logo so i can even change the body here and change it so if you remember the site is still showing in various tech.azurewebsite.com so what i can do i can actually um, change this to my maybe i have my domain in various.org in various dot whatever i can actually change that here as well but that will be in the next video not in this video so thank you so much um for watching this video um if you like this video if you, if, you, if you enjoy this video please don't forget to subscribe to the channel support the channel support me then also give a like give a thumbs up i really appreciate that thank you so much for your time i really appreciate you see you in the next video bye for now